All right, welcome, 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 welcome. <clears throat> we are now live and definitely uh, I'm here and I want to welcome each and every one of you. We're going to talk about a little UFO stuff, but also we're going to be talking about the show that is going to be coming out as well. So again, I just want to thank each and every one of you who are be watching this now and later to be supporting uh, some of the things here. So again, um, you know, welcome, welcome, welcome. So what is this all about guys? Well, of course we know it's been a week full of UFOs. So we'll be, uh, definitely looking into that. And I'll talk about some of the things that has been, uh, happening in the UFO world. So we'll definitely be doing that, uh, as well. But if, in the meantime, if you're here, I just want to say hello in the chat box. Uh, to everyone and uh, we'll just kind of go from there uh, in just a little bit so uh, and this was just really impromptu so basically uh, we can definitely the uh, you know kind of go from there but anyway uh, as you know there's going to be some great things happening and so I'm trying to practice on a little bit of things here in just a few minutes uh, and again, it was impromptu. So if some of you, uh, will start getting these alerts in a minute about this live stream and, you know, I'm update you on a few UFO things that's happening out here as well. And then I will definitely, uh, share with you about the TV show, the alien Endgame. game. So you definitely have to check that out. I'm gonna try to show a few behind the scenes photos that I have, uh, just kind of show you when we made that film for the travel channel and discovery plus. And so, I think, you know, you guys get, get a kick out of some of the behind the scenes photos, but if you here, uh, for the first time, definitely subscribe to the channel, uh, share this particular channel, uh, or this particular video today, because again, it's excitement. Uh, we're, we're talking about the TV show that's going to be airing May 20th. So if you have not heard about it, um, it is the one that I'm in, um, one of three co-hosts, um, and we filmed this, you know, six, seven, eight months last year ago, and, but now uh, they actually gave us a release date, and it's going to be released May 20th on the Discovery Plus. So definitely uh, watch that, and eventually they'll put it on the Travel Channel and all of the other networks over time. So I'm I'm really excited about it, uh, pretty much. And so if you are here. Uh, give me a shout out in the chat. Let me know you're here. And, and I know, again, it's Thursday night, kind of impromptu. Um, and there will be a lot of people watching this later. So basically, I'm just here chatting live. And uh, we just kind of do that as well. So, um, and, you know, and it's not so much of a, a topic. You know, some people may want to talk. But we will discuss some of the UFO things that are happening out here and give you guys some updates on some of the uh, that's happening in the UFO world right now. In fact, there's a lot of sightings. We can discuss some of that tonight as well as some of the other things. But in, in the meantime, um, yeah, all right. So why the big secret is because the reality of full disclosure. What's going on, my friend, Canadian wearing this? Anthony, how's it going? Like I said, it was impromptu. I just wanted to, you know, let people know about the TV show uh, maybe show some behind the scene photos, uh, like that as well, so that we can pretty much, uh, you know, I'm just really excited about it, that that's going to be happening from there. Um, and May 20th is the day. So man, if you definitely, uh, have an opportunity, if you don't have discovery plus, let me say it's going to be worth it to pay whatever the six, seven dollars. Then if you want to cancel it, you can, but at least you get to watch, uh, the, the TV show itself, alien in game. And they changed the name about three times, but you know, I like the name of it. I, I think it's going to be pretty interesting from there. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you saw it too, Nick, cause it was in front too. I didn't really plan it. Uh, I just thought I would get, some more consistency together, some interviews and things that we'll be doing in the future. And I figure I will take some time to uh, talk about the show uh, and then some UFO talk. I got some, some stuff that's popping up from there. So glad to see you here, Nick, as well. And uh, we need to definitely talk and, and just catch up on the telephone as we have done in the past. And so uh, really excited about that. Have you guys been keeping up with the 
UFO sighting that's been surfacing and it's about looks like some big giant cloud uh wish i can have some pictures for you but i may be able to do a screen share uh here but it looks like a huge cloud and and it is said that some of the extraterrestrials what they would do when they put their the shield around their craft to kind of hide when they want to come down low they actually form this cloud around their spacecraft, which for us, we think it's one of the clouds in the sky, but this one had the dome shape to it and everything around it as it moved across the sky. So you might want to Google that uh, and check it out, man. It is pretty crazy, and that's been surfacing around all day today. Uh, so, yeah, cloaking. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I, I would say that they're cloaking uh, across the board when it comes down to that and um, hang on, let me get my little mouse here. But yeah, so um, yeah, the, again, yeah, cloaking. I think is is what they're doing. I think it's one of those things that uh, they have always talked about that they had this technology to cloak. And then we all remember Star Trek, right? You remember the Cleons and all of that. They had this cloaking devices. The only caveat to it is that. At one point, they couldn't cloak whenever they wanted to fire. So I think at that point, so I'm not saying that's going to be happening now, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's one of those things. So, again, uh, once again, Nick, uh, that's shout out to you uh, and pretty much from there. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening out there uh, in the UFO space. You know, we did a show on Clubhouse last night where we – talked about uh, Nick Pope and one of the comments that he made regarding Twitter and how Elon Musk is out to kill all of the Twitter bots. And, and he's saying that because he feels that AI is a threat to humanity, not only anything else, but the fact that AI is integrated within Twitter, uh, he feels that that's something he wants to cut out, not so much in, a, in retrospect to aliens. But Nick Pope says that if he was to do that, he could kill some opportunities that some higher intelligence would use artificial intelligence to communicate with some of us or send messages or, or something like that. And if he was to kill uh, that particular situation within Twitter that could cause some problems or inhibit them from communicating. And we had a lot of discussion about that last night, and, and I didn't get into the deepness of it, but the thing about it is Twitter is one of the largest mediums that, that we communicate throughout our civilization, throughout the world. And if you were a extraterrestrial and you were monitoring conversations or the sentiment of a, of a planet, you will tap into something that the majority, if not billions of people are using uh, to have conversations and everything about. So why not Twitter? And why not, you know, Facebook, Instagram or something like that? So it wasn't too bad right off the back. What's going on, Elso? Uh, it wasn't too, too bad that why wouldn't they think about Twitter as the means of doing that? So I think it's pretty interesting how uh, Nick Pope tied that in to say that there could be a situation to where, um, we're looking at that uh, these extraterrestrials could be using uh, this particular type scenario for that. So I just thought that was pretty interesting, you know, that they would use Twitter. I don't know what you guys think. So uh, what are your comments if anyone saw that? Oh, okay, there you go. So Nick says 23% of Americans have a, tw a Twitter account. So you talking about that is a, what, few billion, millions, not billions, but millions and millions of people, okay? And so you're talking a couple hundred million probably, you know? And so why not that if they wanted to monitor conversations or something within that, that sort, that Twitter would probably be uh, a good old source for them to, to do such a thing. And so I just think it's kind of weird that we would think that that's not possible, but man, you know what? It, it, it really is. And so... Uh, you know, again, that's one of the things that Nick Pope was talking about. What are y'all thoughts about that? You know, uh, Anthony or Canadian awareness, you hear a Nick, you know, that Nick Pope thinks that the extraterrestrials would use Twitter to uh, communicate with us and in something like that. So uh, where well, you say, Dorian, how, how is it going? Uh, and uh, all right. So hang on a second here. So. 
Uh, Nick said, yeah, it's the best thing for disclosure. You think so? Because they said that he may intercept uh, some of the things that if if Twitter was used for communication, he's going to intercept it. He's not going to let it out because he's so far ahead up on the um, – you know, the, the, the programs out there that I think that he's pretty much, um, they, they think he's going to hide information. He's not going to disclose it. I, I don't know. I think that, um, you know, $54 billion, he got it. Him and his folks put the money together. They bought it. Uh, and if you think about it, artificial intelligence, I was watching a video that Jer- Jeremy uh, Corbell was in uh, a news. They was interviewing him, and one of the things he said that, a lot of the spacecrafts that are flying around now are possibly uh, being um, guided by AI, so that the that the um, ETs are not necessarily driving those. So way more likely that someone will leak evidence that ETs will use Twitter. <laughs> Man, if they did that, what the stock of Twitter would probably do? What blow out the roof? That anybody that owns it? So, oh man, I got the thing that the ETs like to talk, and you know and you know, of course, Nick says in that article that, you know, they would probably do something like a, uh, what did he say? Maybe they will, uh, you know, send an instant message just to someone to, to kind of say, hey, you know, hey, we're here or whatever. So I, I don't know the essence of all of that, but I will say that that'll be kind of crazy to assume that uh, that wouldn't be a possibility for them to. Uh, want to use Twitter for this. So I think that's kind of strange enough. I, I, I really do. And uh, so we just kind of have to look at it like that. And where you say, Nicole, how are you doing today as well? Um, and, you know, I just think it's pretty much. But, you know, the excitement, you know, that all of this is happening now. And I think that, you know, where do we go from here? You know, because you, 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 you it's in mainstream media now, right? It's not – that secret squirrel stuff that it used to be, you know, in the past. So where do we go from here now that more people are, you know, now knowing about, uh, you know, extraterrestrials. And and so I think it's just one of those deals that, you know, we, we have to look at it and say, you know, how's that functioning out there? So I'm, I'm really interested in knowing that much. Uh, hang on a second. Just trying to move my uh, screen around a little bit here. And... Maybe we can do just that. Okay, hang on. Um, well, hopefully we're still doing what we do. Yeah, hang on. One minute. Are we still here? No. All right, hang on one second there. There we go. So, yeah, so... You know, at the end of the day, you, you want to think about, you know, how things are going uh, from there. So anyway, uh, what do y'all think about as far as the UFO phenomenon? And like I said, I'm going to share a couple of things here in a minute. But what do y'all think about where we are today with all this information popping out now, you know, and people getting conditioned to it? Would people really stop talking about it? Because it's just something they'd be like, all right, this is mainstream now. What will we care? You know what I mean? So just kind of asking that question, what do you think, you know, if we were to, uh, you know, more of this is coming out now in mainstream. So what do you think about that? You know, and maybe you can post your comments or or something on that when you get an opportunity, but we would definitely uh, do that for much. So one of the things I want to do is, yeah, it is some exciting times. I think it's just really, you know, off the charts when it comes down to this. Um, and this phenomenal period, um, when it comes down to that, but I think they're conditioning us. I really think we're being conditioned to a point to where they're going to, uh, you know, slowly disseminate this information out. But at the end of the day, I think that they're going to, um, really try to play that in. And Dorian says, I think we need to speak on our experiences more now that the government is leasing more information. I am a hundred percent with you. I think that, you know, when you look at what is happening now, uh, Dorian, and we, we spend so much time focusing on what's been, you know, going around in the sky. 
and we spent a lot of time uh, doing that. And I think at the end of the day, we need to start focusing what's on the ground. Nicole says, uh, on water says, I have been following this for almost 20 years, and this is the most disclosure I've ever seen. I think it's going to get deeper than that. I, I really do. Uh, Elso says, I think people will stop talking about it. Every time I brought up to folks, they just laugh and change the subject like I'm nuts. No, I think you're not going to have that much trouble about people thinking you nuts. I think those are people that still have not, it has not resonated with them, especially if you got to look at their culture and lens also. And, and when you think about it, because if they are seeing this phenomenon still from a religious point of view um, and you're talking to them, man, they're going to turn and run uh, as quick as they can because they still can't fathom religiously that we're not alone in this universe. And, and so you're going to get a lot of people that is not going to uh, truly uh, get to a point to uh, understand that. So that's, I wouldn't worry about that, but I think that, but you are, you do have a point once again, that they may tone down the conversations because they're trying to flood it out there. Uh, and then for all of the people that's been around this thing uh, that has been, you know, putting things together, I think, you know, it's kind of like, okay, all right, they, they're talking about it. Now, the government finally admitting it, and people I know are finally coming to terms that we may not be alone. That's it. But where, and, and, and Nicole, what do you think? Do you think that because people are now realizing or coming up with the assumption that we're not alone, will it die the conversation? Could that be a plan for them? Saying, so, you know what, let's push out so much information that people hear it, but just like everything else, it just become they it's just it's just, it's just numb it down. And and when something seriously gets leaked, nobody's really paying attention to it because they done done a good job of just floating stuff out there. So I'm I don't know. So what do y'all think about that? I think it could be a huge plan uh, that these folks have in order uh, as they try to do this. And so. You know, those big secret keepers, man, they really, really um, have a way of doing these things and, and just pretty much. And so I'm going to try to show you all a couple of these uh, behind the scene photos that we we took. And uh, maybe I could do so. Uh, just kind of show you the whole photo a little bit if, if I can. Um, I agree. People would numb down into aliens. To walk. Yeah. You know what? You know, you're correct. I mean, it's going to take extraterrestrials to walk around in plain sight in order for them to to do that. And and so, yeah, you're definitely uh, right on that uh, across the board. So I think that uh, – and uh, hang on a second. I'd like to – Google Chrome would like to record the screen. We're not recording it. All right, so um, – I was going to try to show y'all what was going on with my screen and yeah, well, I got to get permission. So I don't know how to do that just yet, but anyway, I was going to show you some of the behind the scenes photos and, and stuff from there, but you know, it's kind of a, there, yeah, there are some folks that are extreme conspiracy theorists and they won't even believe the proof. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Well, so I think if, if just like, um, Nicole says if the aliens actually start walking around in front of people where it's just, you know, the logic is so undeniable, I don't think we'll have a problem with that. I think we will probably just, uh, you know, they'll be shocked and realize how much we look. Yeah, I get that question all the time. People be like, Roderick, what do you think the, the ETs look like? And I say, well, what if we look like them? And, and, and they'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? And I mean, what if we look like them? Imagine somebody walking up to you and, and looking at your kid and say, man, you look just like your son. And you reply, no, he looks like me because I made him. There's no way that I come after him and he, and you know, and I look like him. So man, that is one of those things that we, we would have to look that people, he said, people I tend to encounter are more religious. That's going to be the problem. I wouldn't say a problem. That's going to be their perspective that how they see this phenomenon is the fact that they are um, 
the the cultural lens is going to be there. And I and I learned this real deeply on Clubhouse. Clubhouse is a place where, you know, uh, if you haven't been there, and some of you are probably from Clubhouse, you know, we can bring people on stage. And usually, now I've done so much interviews and so much, and depending on the conversation and how people uh, see the conversation that we're talking about, or the extraterrestrial, or their demons, and or their angels, or I pretty much know right at that point that, you know, that, you know, people, I know what religion's background, almost, I can almost pinpoint their religion and say, this is what they are and this is how uh, they see it. And it allows me not to, you know, yep, they are original ancestors. We'll talk about that in just a few seconds. And, and so, you know, you get people that come up and, you know, you can know how they see it because again, it, it's just, you, I've had people get on stage and they're arguing, boom, boom. And they really talking about the same thing, but this one was raised over here where the extraterrestrials is demons. This one was raised over here where extraterrestrials are angels. This one, and, and it's just a war and more people have died over religion than anything you can think of. So, uh, let me catch up with some of the comments here. And, yep, this is deep stuff. And um, Dorian says, I have those same experiences also. So she's talking to you. That, you know, we are the ones that paved the way, but I truly believe that those last and we will have a last laugh. We're, we're, they're, they're probably, just like Nicole said earlier, Dorian, they're going to probably do that until one of them literally knocks at their door. Hey, I'm I'm ET from Planet Zoran, and they're not gonna go from there. So, yep, some people call them demons, um, and uh, yeah, and I hear it all the time. So yeah, I'm catch up with some of this stuff here. So, you know, just think with them releasing more information, they're preparing the masses for what has been. Well, it goes always back to um, one of the things. Thank you, Stacy. There that. If y'all remember that Israeli prime minister person, remember right before Trump left office, there was a, a Israeli guy who was over their, um, I think their, their NASA type program. He said that the extraterrestrial said that it is time for humanity to know about them. And they were prepared to, um, uh, they was prepared to, you know, break the silence and it had nothing to do with us. And when they are ready, they were going to, you know, break the silence. And, and maybe our government has said something to the fact that, you know, well, maybe we should, you know, get it out there before them. Cause one thing's for certain, if it's a government thing, the big secret keepers is what I call them. Then you, you're going to have just like anything else, the race of technology is going to be a race. And so, the United States will not want Russia or China or anyone else to be the one to tell the world that they've made contact and they got this relationship with extraterrestrials, no country. So our country definitely is going to want to be the one to uh, get behind that. Right. And uh, so they're going to get us ready and they want to be in front of this thing. But if you think about it, we are seeing more and more, occurrences you know there's more cameras there's people that are uh nicole says the anunnaki re, uh, return i don't know about all that but we will see nick says the anunnaki is interested in sort of hybrid of notes and boats et combines with the angels and demons and i have a book uh, i think on my shelf right here it's uh one that i was reading and uh it's about the anunnaki and i have it somewhere yeah yeah i, I have a book hang on a second here let me get it for you And all right, I'm on this page right here, but it's called the um, Anunnaki Chronicles. I don't know if y'all see that, but uh, you should be able to. And so I'm right at the part where they was talking about Unlil and, and you know, how they, uh, you know, made man, how they was like, hey, what we seek, we're already here. So uh, it's one of those deals. Uh, yep. And uh, yep, the 12th planet. They talk about that, which is supposed to be, uh, Stacy, the 12th planet is supposed to be returning. And, and it's supposed to happen every, I don't know, 
uh, 45,000 years or something where this planet comes back into our orbit, which have caused a lot of uh, trouble back then. Um, yeah, it's a real good book. Yeah, I mean, this thing is, this guy's written so many, but this one's actually the Chronicles, and it goes over each one. So it talks about, you know, the creation of man. That's exactly where I was, and he was talking about how they was, they needed mining, and and they needed us to mine, and the solution, and, and you know, that NT is who it was. To give who that that person is who gives life. The female was in charge of medicine, create a primitive worker is what they said, and. She needed to help with the chief scientist being what you want. He said it already. So the chief scientist told her the being that you want, he said, already exists. So basically, man was probably this Neanderthal type. Um, and so what they're saying is that he then told her or she told him or he told her that the being, which man was already there, but at that time we wasn't able to procreate. And that's what they was talking about in the book. So she created us to be able to procreate and so much other stuff. So this book is deep, man. It's really, really deep. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Nick Larkin. Yeah, there you go. So somebody said they have a book called The End of Days. Yeah, just the same guy. No, no. Well, yeah, this guy, Zacharon, this is his, his niece, Janet Sitchin, uh, Sitchin wrote this because he had already passed on. And so she did all the chronicles of stuff all in one book. So it's like really, really good. And, you know, and I would tell y'all to, to get it. I even have it on Amazon, um, um, audio books, you know, uh, to listen to it. So I listen to it in my headphones as well. So it's pretty good. And it, it does catch you up on a lot of the stuff, what's going on, but it, it, it blatantly talks about how we got here, who created us and all that. So definitely, yeah, that we were engineered for sure. So, you know, and when you think about that and you think about this UFO thing, and, and I was telling somebody the other day, you know, I, I'm a UFO investigator, but I go deeper than that now because it's more than just looking at some photos, right? It's more than just analyzing video data and metadata and all that. Now we have to think a little more consciously of what was really happening. And now, but you have all of this other side too, because you got people talking about the conscious community um, and you know, how it's just so much that we're supposed to be so much, uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. He did pass. Yep. Yep. So it, 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 it's so much that, you know, we have all these special abilities or there's so many, and then this rabbit hole is deep. And, and I used to tell people all the time, you get somebody who tell you, they know everything, all of it. I don't know about that. I don't know. I'm not saying there's not some edgy, very educated people. And Dora and I had a conversation the other night. She is really, really deep into, and I learned a lot just and in, in, had questions. Okay. Uh, and, but I'm not claiming she knows it all, but she knows her stuff. Right. Uh, but I've, every now and then you run into somebody who will say, this is what it is. This is exactly. And I'm like, man, we got the pyramids. We got the, we got the stories. We got all of the history. We got our, biblical stuff we have so much history that it is incredible uh when it comes down to this phenomenal and and as she says now there's so much we don't know and you know and how do we find out and i think it but you know one of the things dorian i think if most of the scholars um and and if we do get past the religious barricades start coming together as one almost what happened in the book with the Tower of Babel, you know, Babel, you know, where the gods was like, no, no, these humans are, are learning too much. You know, they're learning too much. Um, and they're like, you know what, you know, let's split them up. Let's put them in four corners. Let's split their tongues up so that they don't speak the same languages. And, and I think if we came back together as humans, and all become one and start talking about these stuff and comparing notes, right? We may be able to put some real stuff together, some real uh, content to to understand. So, yes, ties into the reported pregnancies from abductions. We are hybrids, and they are making new ones. I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I I I think I would love to meet a hybrid. I would love to 
meet that hybrid person and and really um, get down into the situation. I, I don't know if somebody said, "Hey, you know what? You know, this woman comes up to me and she says I'm hybrid and let's get married." And I'm like, do we have to be married? I mean, I don't know. Shoot, you're a hybrid. It, the, does the laws count? You know. But the whole point is, you know, would we uh, definitely uh, embark on that, knowing willingly, knowing that you can be a hybrid, right? Or this person is a hybrid. So. Uh, it's one of those things that I think that we, we, we will look at. So who knows? So real quickly, um, now that, you know, I just want to let you guys know I'm excited. May 20th, okay, May 20th, uh, we're going to, the, the show is going to be showing. Definitely want you to see that. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy. Yeah. Hopefully it's not too hot. Yeah, so I had I had makeup like a star, <laughs> so that was pretty funny. Uh, just kind of wanted to show y'all that real quick, um, and and just kind of go from there. But yep, they was doing my makeup on me, and I got tons of pictures. I, I just if any of y'all are familiar with uh, Streamyard here, it's what I'm using, and how I can pull these pictures up and show y'all a lot of the behind the scenes photos. Uh, you know that would be pretty cool to to let y'all know i just don't know how to um do this thing and it said i can go into whatever and give permission to uh my 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 to the applications maybe i'll do that um and see if i can can do that from there but in the meantime um it's it's one of these deals that the to to let you know in the tv show we're we we cover a lot of military encounters, which is things that they're not going to talk about today because, you know, one thing's a certain there's camps that do not want people to think that the East DTs could possibly, you know, be uh, malevolent, right? And so we definitely, uh, okay, Nick says you're a pretty, pretty princess, right? <laughs> Man, <coughs> I have a picture of a steak. All right, the biggest steak I've ever had. They took us out to dinner that day, that last day, and it was incredible. Um, and I'm just telling you, if y'all, man, I'm saying. Now I have an Apple computer, so if anyone got an Apple computer, I was trying to do a screen share, and it says that I have to give the software or whatever permission. I don't know how to do that, so. Uh, if I knew how to do that, then I will. Let me just, um, okay, wait a minute. I'm finding something, but I have to give the screen share uh, permission, and then I can show you all some behind-the-scenes photos, uh, but that's not happening right now. So if you all know how to do that, let me know, and, and I will set it up uh, from here. Any of you, uh, you know, good old computer people. Yeah, from there. But in the meantime, uh, like I said, there was a UFO reported. Um, and this one, again, was the one that was having looking like a cloud. So if y'all Google that, that thing looked just like a spaceship with a dome. And who knows? But it was moving and it was moving slowly and it stayed compact the way it was. And so people were like, you know what? That is something uh from there so screen sharing all right so there we go let me see uh it said i can do that uh all right i think my permissions is on to to do a screen share so i'm gonna try to try it again and see what happens y'all hang on one second here let's see if we can do that share screen i have two monitors that's cool Screen two. No, it says go to system preferences, unlock the screen by selecting the lock button. All right. All right. So I'm going to have to try that one more time. If not, then I'm not going to mess this up. System preferences and the lock button. I don't know. So anybody know anything about that? Uh, as far as... Uh, how to uh, show the, uh, I'm on, like I say, I'm on uh, 
Google. But anyway, I, I'm using a Mac, but it says that I have to give it permission. It says, you know, to fix it, go to permissions and uh, and let's see. Crickets. Yeah, I know, right? Somebody, come on. Y'all help me out. Uh, what's going on, Sheldon? Uh, anybody know how I could set this thing up? Check Google Chrome. If you already checked it, uncheck it. It's known as the issue. Um, yeah, I'm in system preferences. That is open. Hang on. And uh, anyway, all right, so let's not worry about it. We'll keep talking. And uh, But I had a lot of photos. I wanted to show you all some behind-the-scenes photos of making that documentary for uh, the Travel Channel in the, in the show. And uh, definitely was going to pop them up here for you. And then you could be like, yeah, 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 we, we like that. So, But I'll keep messing with it and finding out. Um, how to uh, give it the uh, access here. I don't know. I'm just looking. I have two monitors here. Y'all can't see them, but I have two monitors uh, from here that I pretty much can uh, do that from now. So anyway, let's get down into uh, one of the things that uh, we need to, to really. I, I got a couple of cases from MUFON that uh, one was a crop circle uh, case. And I'm almost finished it, but they said once I've done I've done it, I could kind of talk about it and, and bring it up. But this is a crop circle uh, that was in a field, so it wasn't like like the ones that we see back in some of the the big, um, you know, other countries and stuff. This was in the United States, somebody backyard sort of field, and there was like four or five crop circles uh, made like with the leaves and and stuff, and it was pretty interesting. I got the photos. Uh, once I close the file out, then I, I can go ahead and talk about it, but not exactly who, who 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 submitted it, but I can show you. But I'm working on that right now, and they have a picture of the dog that this dog won't even go, you know, with the leash. He won't go around the presence of these things, and it's like there's some energy uh, behind it. And I thought that was kind of weird that, you know, usually the crop circles are humongous. Um, you know, you're talking like, crazy humongous this thing was probably you know uh, it was in a backyard a big backyard but it was several smaller which okay i am going to investigate and make it wasn't done with some lawnmower and all that because it was in the grass uh so that uh, it wasn't crop right because of the fact that it wasn't you know uh using corn or stock or anything like that so it was in someone's yard so it was but it was you know really made evenly uh so it's worth interesting so you know looking into so i'm gonna I'm check that out uh and maybe it can't be a crop circle because it's not crop it's what would we call it it'd be a backyard thing but it looks like crop circle so i thought that was interesting but the dogs will not uh venture nowhere near this particular anomaly so i thought that was a uh, Pretty cool information from there. So we'll we'll look into it from there. Is there anything in particular anyone um, needs some information on? Because um, what I'm gonna also start doing, if you stay in certain areas or live in certain cities, I also got permission with MUFON. I can go into the database and literally pull up your zip code uh, and tell you how many sightings and different things are in those areas or how many reports have been made. So I'm going to be doing some of those live too, just giving you more updates and, and more of your place and where you live. And some of you'll be shocked how many reports of UFOs come through. And, and that doesn't mean that they all are. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, animals have a higher sensitivity to paranormal presence. Yeah. Yeah. I can believe that. Uh, that sixth sense or seventh, whatever the dogs and cats have, you know, is, and, and, but yeah, this, I actually got the photos of that to where this dog, uh, will not go into, you can see him trying to walk him across it. And he's like, no, I'm not doing it at all. So that's the only thing that really piqued my curiosity because outside of that, I'm like, okay, who could have made this, you know, in this yard or whatever. Um, but when the dog displayed what it displayed, um, uh, and, you know, I'm going to investigate more. Uh, it is in the Texas area, uh, so make sure it's not something they don't put in the ground to where they don't want to, uh, you know. Okay, I'll give you mine. What would you give me? What's yours? Your dog? 
or, or what? <laughs> you give me your. You got a dog? You're trying to give away. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, because there's there, there's been a, a lot of tricks out there play on this stuff where people been playing tricks uh, when it comes down to this uh, from there. Uh, but in a game, um, tomorrow or next week, uh, if you anybody's in the Dallas area next week, let me know. They're coming to Dallas with the film crew. I'm going to be shooting next Thursday and Wednesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So I'm going to be doing like four episodes each day. Um, so if you're around, you let me know. You can check it out, watch the film shoot or whatever. They're already at uh, over the sky at this point. If you've seen them, that means they wanted us to see them. I don't know about that, Sakura. I, I get a lot of people that say that, uh, okay, I live in Quantico Marine Base, and we always have something in the air. Did, did y'all see the uh, – um, did y'all see the mermaid thing that just surfaced everywhere? They had a, a video of a mermaid and – supposedly, and now the police has come out. Oh, it was fake. Some people say, oh, you can see the string where they was pulling it. Like they actually caught a fish, cut it open, stuck this little boy off in it to kind of pretend that he he was a mermaid. I don't know if y'all seen it. That surfaced all over these last four days. Anybody actually see that video uh, from there? Um, And, again, there's supposedly something that came out the ocean extraterrestrial, right? And I thought that was pretty, uh, you know, this this video went viral, you know, and now they're shutting it down, and they're saying that, uh, oh, it was a, it was a fake. It was coming from that local police department, as opposed to all those people that were sitting and they was doing up club up close photographs. I didn't see no strings and and all that, and it wasn't from afar, you know. So uh, you saw it. What what was your thoughts on that, Nicole? When you saw it, did you look at it a few times? Because I looked at it real close. I, you know, as they was moving around, just trying to see the body parts of this thing. Was it truly one whole body? Uh, clearly, the little boy was. And but the other shocking part was, if this mermaid was sitting there dying in front of people, they wasn't trying to help it at all, right? pick it up and put it back out in the water, you know. So that was the only thing that I was like, hmm, are we that bad as humans? You know, we're not going to uh, do that. Uh, so you saw it too? Nick said he saw it. It was so dumb. Yeah. I'm like, okay, this thing is sitting here, and it's about to pass out, and you're not going to sit here and help it, you know. I just thought that was pretty crazy. You know, from now. So, what was your thought, Nick, when it came down to this mermaid? You know, uh, did it look real at all? I mean, I I was like, you know, but again, I kept trying to look closer, like, man, you know. So it was just pretty much uh, so obviously fake. If you watched it, I at first, like I said, I kept putting it on there, and I didn't really. I, I guess I wasn't looking at it too close. I saw it, but the movements didn't look. Yeah, yeah. I I noticed the movements same thing but i just thought it was a mermaid a mermaid moves like that (laughs) or again you know as they zoom in around i'm looking at the fish body that's all i'm paying attention to anyway because i'm like this thing is not making any sense the human was on the beach so his legs were clearly in the sand okay so they actually took this fish because somebody said there was flies on the fish and uh pretty much and and so they thought they thought that was pretty uh ironic you know there was flies on the fish and it was just pretty much so i i thought it was uh pretty crazy yeah all right so but that's but then again uh it was a real kid but just didn't look right (laughs) i mean so what do you think about that when you have this fake stuff like this that surfaces and then you still have all this this government disclosure that comes out. Isn't like counterintuitive? You know what I'm saying? It's like you know we're trying to get disclosure, but then people are putting this fake stuff out here, which just makes it you know uh, one of those things. You know, and what do y'all think about that? Because it, it doesn't make sense at all. Uh, you say you didn't see any flies. I was reading. Um, I'm going to look at it again real close tonight. Um, 
But yeah, I was supposed to be someone. I was reading some comments that they was talking about. They see the flies, and like I said, I I, I should have said I. That's what I was reading, but I didn't see them either. But there was several comments that said there was flies on the fish itself. So I think that'd be worth, um, you know, checking that out and, and kind of seeing what's going on there. But that, you know, again, does that do us any good when it comes down to that? Because you're talking about, you know, putting this fake stuff out there uh, in the audience. I mean, not the audience, but in spaces out there. And then at the same time, the big secret keepers are trying to disclose little information. Once again, it just makes people say, oh, this whole because now we're talking mermaids, right? And and we know uh, that that's supposed to be part of what's going on. Um, I, I read there's no, there's evidence of CGI, but I didn't see it. Looks like a really cheap attempt to host. I mean, but they did zoom in on this thing with, with people around it. And, and maybe they enticed some of you guys to, to, to look it up. I, I don't know, but um, I, I just saw it. And, and again, I wasn't too, keen on the way the little boy was like he was passing out the mermaid and we all just standing around like it's a mermaid you know not nobody thought about it's a mermaid put it put it back into the water that's where it lives right so nobody wasn't gonna uh, pick it up so <laughs> Aquaman too yeah <laughs> it is possible it's definitely uh, possible uh, when it comes down to that uh, from there so I just think it's pretty much so to give y'all some updates um, when this show come out, I don't know how we can come in on it or anything, but I definitely, if you, you, you know, you're going to like it, um, but definitely, you know, send discovery some messages. Hey, this guy Roderick, you know, and blah, 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 you know, just kind of seeing, uh, you know, just pretty much doing that and, and just kind of in two weeks, I'll be in um, Colorado were George Nori beyond the belief. So I'll be filming that in two weeks. I thought it was in the 20 something, but it's going to be the 12th. So I'll be doing that show, um, you know, with him and, and hopefully I get an opportunity to, uh, live, to do one of my lifelong dreams. And that was to be uh, a host on the radio show coast to coast. And so they talked about it. So I may can do what they call a fill in or something one night. So that is one of my, uh, dreams and, uh, something I've always wanted to do. And I used to be up way late at night listening to Art Bell and, and, you know, good evening, everyone. And George Knapp and, and man, I used to just really kill that stuff at night. And, and, but Art Bell was talking about a lot of stuff. Nobody was freaking out. Th that was my point. Like I said, nobody was trying to, you know, get this thing back into the water you know, or, and try to help them, uh, pretty much from that. Yep. Thank you. So I'll be doing that. Um, also you all know that Billy Carson, if y'all have an opportunity, I don't know when he's going to sell the tickets. Um, uh, but in Detroit, Michigan, uh, June the 5th, I think that's a Sunday. There is going to be, he, he rented out the whole theater. Okay. We're going to do a red carpet event and he, he's going to, um, do the, uh, uh, like a yeah a red carpet event and then you know we can all see the premiere of this documentary so definitely uh, if you in that area or if you want to fly there that day I'm gonna go in probably that Saturday and then of course that Sunday uh, be there and then uh, supposed to get with Faye she's gonna come up there hopefully to be the plus one but we'll see the whole point is to um, um, you know, support, you know, Billy Carson and what he's doing. I think it's, it's going to be crazy. Um, and, and I think uh, I'm not in this particular trailer, but I can show y'all the, the trailer of the show real quickly. It's like 30 seconds. So let me see about airing this up right quick. Hang on. This is right in the middle of the Cold War. Everyone is on high alert. And then the United States detects something in orbit the discovery of an Earth orbiting satellite. Can you imagine the surprise when both the Americans and the Soviets realized it wasn't either of them? What I think is the most important thing to understand, are we being watched, who is watching us, and where are they from? I am Billy Carson, and this is my investigation into the Black Knight satellite.
Yeah, so there you go. So definitely want you to do that. I'm actually in that document. I didn't make the that particular clip, but the three-minute trailer, I'm in the trailer. That was just a 30-second. Uh, but anyway, why not? You got to market those big-name folks, you know, Jimmy Church and all those other people anyway. Uh, but I'm just glad to be in it. So um, I flew down and, and put me into that. So I'm in that, and and I had some behind the scene photos of that too. I was I was going to show y'all too. I just can't, you know. And all you computer whiz is out there didn't show me how to, so I can do this. But um, so that's a documentary um, that I'm in, um, and then there's going to be one, uh, you know, when Roswell, New Mexico, have their anniversary in the next few months. Uh, that's going to be uh, pretty much a. I'm reading Billy's book now. Can't wait to see this document. Yeah, it is a powerful documentary. You know, uh, we went through a lot of stuff with that. You learned a lot of things. Uh, you guys are going to be really, uh, really uh, intrigued uh, with this Black Knight satellite that's sitting around orbiting us right now that nobody knows where it comes from and what it's doing, uh, all the way back to the Telsa thing, you know. So you definitely want to uh, check that out. So anyway, I did a documentary for... Fox Tubi, uh, which is going to be uh, based upon the uh, the Roswell, New Mexico anniversary. So that should be airing as well. I finished that film. I, you know, I was just in it as an expert as well uh, back in November or whatever. So that one is set to air. So probably in about next few months, three or four shows uh, is going to be going down. And so I'm pretty like, golly, man, that is pretty cool. And then, of course, I'm shooting the eight episodes for Forbidden Knowledge TV. You know, Billy started his own network like Gaia, so to speak, um, and that'll be doing that. And, and, and speaking of Gaia, just let y'all know, uh, last week, um, Gaia um, made me one of their brand ambassadors. And so we'll be talking about a lot of Gaia stuff here on the live stream, you know, talking about a lot of shows on Gaia as well as uh, probably having a lot of people that's in a lot of their documentary as guests here now. Uh, that's part of the plan. Uh, but, yeah, I'm one of their brand ambassadors. And so if you don't have a guy, your subscription, wait. You know, I'll give you a good code. You can be able to get that as well. And uh, But, yeah, and so I'll be doing that as well as Billy, too, brand ambassador for his network. But for Gaia, they just, uh, uh, you know, put me into the – to the um, to the stables of that. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah. So that was is pretty intriguing. Uh, have a lot of access to a lot of people. So we're, we're going to really be bringing up our game here on why the big secret and really getting everybody out in front uh, of a lot of those things. And then my biggest request and giving y'all a hint, hint, I am also, um, just pretty much, uh, yep. Thank you. She like guy. There you go. All right, all right, all right. And uh, so also, I I did a developmental agreement for a show for one of the big networks. And uh, this is going to be based upon uh, some of the uh, experiences in the African-American community when it comes down to this. So if anyone out there know anybody from a celebrity to individuals that are, are African American, um, that you know have the, some stories that you know, there's real definitive. I want to do an interview um, because what I'm doing now is working on that project to kind of see a difference in the cultural lens based upon uh, a community and how it's affected by the phenomenon itself. Because as you know, you know in some cases, and I'll just share this with you. When I was doing a lot of research, and if you go back to the 50s and the 60s, you know, you're not going to find too many African-American stories, although we are probably just on the same boats, the same ships and everything else. Uh, but if you think about why and, and really go deep into what we will call, you know, uh, insult to injury, you know, so you're not going to have back when desegregation was really high. You know, somebody black walking into the police station and said, hey, by the way, I saw a UFO at the time that there was a lot of racism and lynching and all these things. And so there's a big gap in between the history uh, when it comes down. And, and, and what really sparked this, I, I met a lady probably about four months ago. I was doing some, some things out in the streets and 
she was probably about 80, 90 years old. And she said, I seen a UFO. And, uh, and I was like, okay, uh, Matias DeStefano, I'll look that up. Um, maybe I can get a link or something on that. But, uh, they, they, the lady was 80, no, well, she was 90, between 85 and 90 years old. I never forget, but she mentioned when she was a child out in the cotton field that they was out picking cotton, a UFO flew down, uh, right in, in the cotton field while they was there uh, picking cotton. And, and, and I was like, what? And I was really intrigued with that. And I was like, did anybody tell? She's like, well, no, we weren't going to go to tell, uh, the, you know, the, the big house about it. And, you know, everybody was like, no. And so you think about that and, and a lot of other issues out there back then. And even now today, based on the religious background, because in, in, in my community, as we know, in the religious background, we're not talking about this stuff. So I'm uncovering, um, and I'm going to have some religious scholars, uh, a lot of different people, people you know, uh, that's going to be in this documentary. And uh, we're going to be really tackling it from a, cultural lens uh to kind of see you know the differences there and in, in what's really and how people do this and and i've already y'all always heard my story that you know i was married and so it wasn't a lot of conversations that my wife at the time would have with me about ufos and and it wasn't because it was just the spiritual side she just didn't want to hear it it, it, it don't make sense you know it's just it was just out the window um, so less than two years ago, it was conversations I couldn't even have in my house and I almost like gave up and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Um, uh, and she said, grandma told me she saw one. And when she was younger behind her house, she was one-on-one when she passed that, you know, it's sorry to hear that, but those are the stories that are untold because you got a lot of documentaries out there. You, you don't see a lot in this perspective, even in the Hispanic community, in which we know, you know, it's embedded in Brazil and all of these other places that UFOs are common. Uh, and so that's something that uh, uh, we can do that. Yeah, sorry to hear that, uh, Nicole, as well. So, um, but anyway, in my house, like I said, I couldn't even talk about it, you know. And I almost, and, and this is a true story, I came so close to becoming, you know, thinking that this is, is really, truly bothering my beautiful wife here at the time. And, and Roderick, you know, cause I would be late at night and I'm watching ancient aliens. And when she go to bed and all this stuff and she had, there was three stepchildren and every now and then a conversation would come up saying, you know, uh, you know, don't show my kids that stuff. And I almost like, you know what, this is bothering her. And, you know, I, that's the last thing I need because I issues I already had issues, and, and I was like, the last thing I need. And uh, and when I wanted to become a UFO investigator, and we was down on one car, and I was like, let me go do it. And she was like, nah, you know, didn't even come home. And I was like, you know what, let's let's not do this. But we end up separating, you know, a few months later, and I end up going to MUFON, doing some of the other stuff. And you're talking a year and a half later, you know, seven TV shows, radio you know, book thing, just working on all of this stuff, which I know I'm in the right place. And, 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 and I still don't, I don't, I'm not mad at her for that because I know now, excuse me, based on the cultural lens and the religious side of things, it was just something she couldn't handle. Uh, and, and so I don't hold it against her as though, you know, it was something holding back. So, I, and I know a lot of other people deal with that. I know there's people on here now in your relationships you know, Nick, I think you and I had personal stories of what you were going through uh, for your son. And one of the issues was the conversation, right? And and so we know that this this theme is, is pretty much, um, you know, have hit people different places, you know. And I think it's just one of those things from there. Um, there you go. All right. Oh, Native American. Yeah, so she, she knows the stories. Yep, yep, yeah. Uh, I know a guy who claimed he was abducted by one. He sounded traumatized by his experience. Huh. They out there. Um, and there's a lot of people, you know, no matter what color they are, they are traumatized by this stuff. And, and, and I didn't realize how many people it were until um, Clubhouse. Okay. When Clubhouse came marching in and all, we would get people on the stage crying. Maybe men 
crying about their experiences, crying about how they wish they can tell their wives or, or significant other, you know, they share everything but those stories because it's just so screwed up. And so I think that, you know, as we know, with the, the big secret keepers and everybody coming out with what's going on now, it's a, it'd probably be a little more vindication for people so that they can go back and say, aha, you possibly, you wasn't lying. Oh, my husband, this may have happened to my husband. This stuff is real, you know, and, and, and everything else. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want nobody coming up to me and say, well, I told you I got pregnant. I mean, like, where the baby at? You know, you know, that's that humor side of it. But I think that uh, we, we look at that. <laughs> And and there we go. I mean, so still to this day, you're going to have family that look at people wrong, look at people different. Um, and like I said, so I take that into account of the whole basket of what's happening in ufology or this phenomena today to just anybody. And then I shape it into a community uh, bowl with where I grew up, uh, where, again, I was told that, before I'm reading, now don't get me wrong. My mom raised me Christian to the T. Okay, so I believe that there's a person walking around who can turn, you know, feed five thousand, turn fish, and I believe that this person can raise the dead and and all these things. But at the time, and but I I'm not supposed to believe that there's a spaceship or something flying around that's not from here or we are not here alone in this universe. And I'm not supposed to believe that. But I'm I'm here to believe all other stuff in the, in this book, and and so um, I think that uh, recently found out I had other family members coming around to this, yeah, and you know, and it's it's one of those things that again you you just look at it, but um, you know, um, again I'm supposed to believe all of these things, and so when I start reading this, and what and what I'm finding out, and it's just my personal opinion, y'all, no one else's that the Bible stories are not not in, not inaccurate. It's, it's pretty much how the story, because the, the Noah story is actually in here, okay? And talk about how, the, you know, the, the ark was built and how we was flooded out on purpose because we were some bad humans, you know, at the time. You know, I'm not going to kill the whole story for y'all. But religions has programmed many not to see, and there's as much stigma around seeing, experiencing the sumer day. Yeah. And so there is a Jesus in the past of the stories, you know, but again, the story that I was grew up on was a little different. And so, and one of the things for me was that, you know, it was a little different. So <laughs> I was going to bring that up, Nick, you know, but I'm glad you said it. So I'll bring it into some more, but his ex-wife lawyer grilled me about the belief in UFOs when he was on the stand. So Nick told me his story that, and, and just like I'm saying how big this was, he was in a, a, a horrific custody battle uh, for his child, for his son. Um, and, uh, and so to discredit him as a father, and, and of course he's ex-military in military intelligence, great record, great father, by the way. But the, the, the way that that lawyer said, we're going to kill his integrity. We got to do this for the judge to say, the child should not stay with Nick, the father. They asked him, do you believe in UFOs? And that statement was supposed to discredit him mentally, the whole nine yards of the father, and they actually brought this in court. And it reminded me of that Democratic, uh, if y'all remember, there was a, years back, there was a Democratic, uh, what they call the, you know, when they go against each other, debate. And one of the candidates who was winning, by the way, got knocked out the box when they asked him, oh, by the way, you believe in UFOs. And people start laughing. So, yeah, that was one of those things there. Um, what did Elijah go up in? Um, anybody want to answer that, Dorian, anybody? What did Elijah go up in? You mean, like, did he use a craft? Uh, if you can kind of give me a little more, uh, beloved Bella, a little more, and then we'll get you the answer there. Um I was raised Christian too, but I always asked a million questions on Sunday school because it never lined up for me. Yeah, you better be careful on that one. Uh, Jesus was real, but not was written in the Bible. Yes. Yeah. So that's what I realized. Jesus was real, uh, 
but not correlating with the stories the way uh, he's depicted in the Bible itself. And so I, I thought that was pretty much uh, uh, from there. So uh, one of those things, again, uh, it, 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 like with Nick, like I was saying. So, by the way, Nick won the case. He, he has custody of his, father, his son. Uh, so it didn't work, uh, and possibly maybe now, and, but 20 years ago it probably would have worked on him, you know, 15 years ago, 10, 5. Before all of this UFO talk, they, they probably, the judge would probably say, yeah, he ain't going to be a good father. He believes in UFOs and aliens, you know. So uh, who knows? But I think, you know, this is where we are in this day of time, and uh, that's something that I think people are still dealing with in their families right now. So, um, all right. So I always thought Elijah went up in a spaceship, but I started reading it as a child. Uh, I think the story was even with, uh, even in, in the Moses story, I think, you know, they, they go back into if, and I could be wrong. So let me not go too deep into that, but supposedly the burns or the, the, the clouds or something, when he went up into the mountain, it's supposed to have been a spacecraft that came down. So, uh, I'm not for sure if it's so that, but, uh, Good for you, Nick. Yep. And uh, Stacy said that was terrible. I think she was talking about your story. But Nick won. So came out on the other side. And uh, so at this point, when Father's Day's come around, he's the man. My man. Appreciate you, Nick. But so, but again, but that's what we go through, everyone, right? That's one of those things that we're dealing with when it comes down to this phenomenon. And so I'm trying to do some, but okay, let me stop for a minute. I have a survey for y'all. Um, and I really need anybody who's watching this video right now, do a comment on what I'm about to ask you. I have a personal uh, belief or not belief or, or, or something I want to look into. I know this UFO thing is so serious all the time and every now and then when i'm on clubhouse i'll say something funny or i'll, I'll try to bring some humor in it to 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 make people laugh or look at this a little different every now and then i get ridiculed for it you know i'll get some back end messages you know why are you making fun of, and i and i never make fun of anyone or the thing because i i really believe that you know what has happened is serious enough but I also think adding some humor into it from time to time will give us some to be normal with this thing. What do y'all think about that? Because in one of my shows, I, I just kind of, you know, I may laugh a little bit, but like I said, I don't make fun of individuals, what they're going through or anything or the thing itself. It's just, you know, I may say something humorous for me, but do we have to be so serious with this? I mean, I'm talking serious guns, knives, serious when we talk about this subject matter. Please let me know what y'all thoughts to that uh, and how y'all feel about that because I'm, I'm, I, I do like being me. I do like my the personality, and I want to bring more of me into this when I do these TV shows or different things, but I don't want to offend anyone. And like I say, I will never make fun to offend anyone anyway. But the whole point, I, I just want to be, you know, so – uh, please just kind of, uh, all right. Human sarcasm. Yes, please. All right. All right. So I got one there. Humor helps me cope with life. So it's cool. All right. All right. All right. We're doing good. I like your humor. Great, great, great. Okay. Cause I mean, I had a whole, I was with a production team and you know, they were pretty cool. And then one lady in the group, she says, Roderick, well, I don't know. If people want, and like I said, I didn't, I never made fun of anybody, any situation or anything. Just like you may hear me say, all right, we got these hybrids out there. Who's paying child support? You know, how do you go and fill out the application and be like, who's the daddy? Oh, it's an alien. And, and do they read it and say, <laughs> right, we're going to give you the, the, the assistance that you need, uh, you know, for some, something like that. But all right, there you go, Nick. And, uh, so, you know, I think, um, uh, Thank you, Nicole, as well. Um, and I, I just, again, I think it's, it's you, you want to look at these things in real life, you know, and, 
you know, everyone else. And, you know, and I was talking the other day and, I, and we was actually doing a skit thing. And I was saying, they asked me, you know, talking about, well, meeting an extraterrestrial. And I think I talked about this on Clubhouse. And I was like, well, you know, I'm not fit a, you know, we all seen the movies. You go down a dark alley in the cans and you hear the cat and then, and then you see the little steam and fog and, and a, the extraterrestrial pop out. And, you know, do you stop and say, hey, hey, I want to meet you. I, you know, that's not the human side. But the whole point I'm saying is we all say, yeah, I want to meet one. But then when that report came out, we talked about it, right? All right, about this radiation burns and all that stuff. I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that. So... Uh, let me go back real quick. I don't believe it was a spacecraft explaining the chariot of horses. Okay, so that's to the answer uh, that you are answering for Bela, uh, beloved Bella, right? Uh, okay, so that would be cool there, too. So uh, we have to have some humor. We can get to it. Okay, appreciate it. And uh, humor is good. All right. Got to flash some light beams up there and serve your alien baby daddy with child support. I know, right? I mean, I, as a man, right, I understand exactly what you're saying because, uh, yes, you're correct. But you think about it, though, seriously, though. If the government is saying that we have extraterrestrial pregnancies out here and you a woman is one of these people and she's walking around do they provide her with assistance or, you know, are they going to laugh at this person literally filling out the application saying my baby dad is an alien or could you use that anyway? Because, you know, when I was growing up, you could have a baby, if I'm not mistaken, you didn't have to put the father on the paperwork. But today, if they wanted to come out to the dad for any assistance that the mom would ask for, if needed, then they're coming out to their money. And so at the end of the day, it's like, uh, Oh, first of all, yes, Dorian, they didn't know how else to describe it, okay? And, uh, but, you know, at the same point, it's one of those deals. So I wanted to meet one, but not in a dark alley. I agree with you. That was my point. It was like, you know, you think about the movies and stuff and, and how all of this is going down. I'm not doing it that way. And now it's kind of so weird because we are all familiar with the possibility that the hybrids are out there. So I don't know if any of you, would want to meet a hybrid okay or date one in fact that's another question would you if someone you were dating finally told you oh by the way i am an alien and you know let's you know mate and procreate or whatever the word breed or whatever would you do it you know, and how do you, how would you do it? You know, and, and I'm saying this because what are we thinking about? Yeah. The possibility someday that it is going to be a normal conversation that the person across from somebody, whether our kids, grandkids or whatever, it's not from this planet. And how does that work? I feel like they won't give her any assistance because that's a perfect loophole not to help. Shit, they won't do it now anyway. So uh, better yet, she walk out of there, you know, and you know, I, <laughs> Okay, what would you do though? Okay, El. So let's say you were the caseworker now, because you you in this game. We here in the game. We all here in the game, right? So you were the caseworker, and it was your job to you know grant assistance. And you read the application, and the girl says, "My baby, I was pregnant by an alien, but I need food stamps or I need help." Would you laugh, even knowing what we know today? Even though we know hybrids exist, we know what's going on. Would you stamp approval in, or you say, no, nah, come on now, seriously, you know, <laughs> in the, okay. All right. Yes. So they will say since he's not from earth, they have no jurisdiction. You know what I'm saying? But any of y'all, what, what if y'all was working, you were the caseworker and that was, you know, something that came across your desk that, and she's sitting here, she's pregnant and she, and you, of course she can't verify, but she's pregnant. I mean, you see her pregnant, but she says, uh, I need the assistance. My, my baby is an alien. I mean, uh, the daddy, and I don't know where he is. And you know, uh, okay. How do we know we haven't already? I don't know. So what would they do is very well orchestrated or deal. Most abductees are highly creative and on disability. <laughs> Shoot, I don't know. It, it, 
mentally or something. I, I, I don't know. But I think these people now should find a little more solitude because they're not crazy. And we know they're not. You know, laugh a lot. People still have issues with interracial breeding, let alone interspecies. <laughs> she got that right, shit. You know, I, I'm agree with you on that. But I'm just saying, if we think about a lot of this stuff that's happening in reality now, you know, pretty soon, you know, we're going to have our children going to work to space. Because you remember Jeff Bezos said, industry is moving to space. So eventually some of our kids, I don't, my kids are 20 something and 30, but some of the smaller children will go to be going to work in space pretty soon. And they're going to come home. Hey, I saw a spaceship last night. You know, I would not believe it. Even if I read all the listed, read it, listed and watched. You mean you wouldn't believe Stacy, you wouldn't believe her. If, if you're answering that question, like if you were the caseworker and she was saying I was pregnant by extraterrestrial and I need, you wouldn't believe it. Or what would you do? <laughs> Where did you get this information? Bob, any source of that? Okay, so Bob, Bob. Okay, what did Bob say? Bob say it was real. Not uh, is that what Bob said there, or, or am I behind on the post? So let's see what we got. So you say okay. So so you're saying correct. You wouldn't give him the assistance. Well, I don't know. See me, I'll prove that shit so fast and lose my job. Probably yeah. <laughs> the, you know, supervisor be like, "What the hell are you doing, Roderick?" I mean, like, okay. I feel like these caseworkers will be trained to say it's approved, but press a green button to take these pregnant women as a special assistance clinic to do the test on their babies. You know, I've heard that story similar to that where someone, I forget where it was, but a lady was telling me on the phone that she went in for something like that and they ended up shifting her somewhere else. Um, because of whatever they found when, and she was claiming, you know, extraterrestrial. So that would not surprise me, uh, when it comes down to it, but that's just my vivid imagination. Um, industry is definitely moving to space. Yeah. And Jeff Bezos said he's going to be doing that. I wouldn't believe it because how could you prove it? Well, it's not so much proving that she was pregnant. Okay. So let's bag up for a minute. Stacy, do you believe and what the reports are coming out now from this FOIA that's coming out from their former ATIP program that they were saying that there was pregnancy. So let's start there. Do you believe that report? Is that a yes or a no? Uh, let me know. Um, Cause you really think you won't be too crazy exams on the rare cases. Yeah. Uh, DNA test. I don't know. I mean, well, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that if you, uh, you know, what's up, Nunez? You know, you wouldn't do that if it was a regular person. So you're talking about, yes, I totally believe that. Okay. So, you know, you wouldn't, Nick, ask for a DNA test if it was someone else on a regular basis. So that person would probably sue the hell out of everybody, right? But then at the same time, you're not going to want that story to get out because the person is saying in the lawsuit now, right? Oh, I, I went in because I told him I was pregnant. So I, I don't know how that would work, but LSO depends on if there has been any disclosure now. There were women assistants. I don't know who the father is. Really, if the hospital labs, they would be studying a baby's blood test that. But, you know, we're just talking about, we're just talking about the caseworker though. We're just talking about going up to the local office to get assistance and they just start there. You know, uh, I don't think this person would be in some, you know, um, experiment or people are going to know and, and go to that point, you know, because first of all, they have to shoot out whoever it is, have to get through that first section of it, just telling them, hey, I'm, I'm pregnant, you know, uh, from that standpoint. I don't know. Maybe a hybrid fetus looks different from a sonogram. Well, you know, we did, I think there's only five boxes on the government phone. No clerical person would know what to do. <laughs> they would. <laughs> Uh, and that's why I said that that'll be funny enough to 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 deal with that. And if you saw that, what would you do? I mean, and would you go to your supervisor and say, "Look, I got this issue. What do we do?" But then you, you didn't saw in the news yesterday that there was a government report that some women said they could be pregnant from extraterrestrials, and and so now it's like, <laughs> could she be telling the truth? How do you prove it? And how can't you prove it? And so we, not, not only are we in that situation today, because we do get people that comes on a show, comes on Clubhouse, that say that they have 
extraterrestrial children that are on spacecraft because they can't pass for human. Uh, Mary Edwards, uh, she says she has 10, 20 uh, hybrid children out there. Okay. And, and so she Adam and she's a friend of mine and we talk all the time and I don't look at her to say, man, she could be telling a crazy story. You know, I believe she believe in, 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 and I believe her story. So, but is it possible? Probably so. I just think they're only five. Okay. We said that one. I wouldn't tell them unless anything came out weird in an ultrasound, <laughs> but they're not going to do an ultrasound when you are just trying to get assistance. Right. I mean, do they do that? I don't know. But, you know, we're just talking about a standard person walks into the to the clinic, not the clinic, but like the human resources office and say, I need some food stamps or, or something. And, of course, they say, well, who the father and blah, blah, blah. And you say, well, I was pregnant by an alien who abducted me, you know, some months back. And you'd be like, what? You call the police? You know, they're going to act like they care. But I don't think it'll go down like that at all. I really don't think it's going to go down. And again, if you're here for the first time, you know, do share, subscribe to the channel, uh, to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, we've probably got about 10 minutes left that we'll be here, but uh, just really, truly having a great time. And I really wanted to show y'all 20 different behind the scenes photos that we did out in the desert uh, with this uh, movie on Discovery Channel that you're going to see and everything else. And I think it's just pretty much uh, from there. I'll, I'll approve them. I'll ask the moms to invite me <laughs> to the baby shower. <laughs> now, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> and I'll be trying to be in on those babies' good side. You ain't lying. That is freaking funny. Do y'all remember this movie? Anybody remember the movie right here? Uh, let me do it on my camera. V. Y'all remember that movie? That one, they had a baby. Remember, they was the aliens that, that came in and then, oh, appreciate the super sticker, man. Let me put that up there. All right, appreciate it. Got some contributions. You helping out. You helping out. I appreciate you. I really do appreciate it. Believe me, I really appreciate you. Do I need to dance for it? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, everyone else who support what we do but they gave him disability they gave him disability wow okay um if there was disclosure and they integrate into society they would probably have their own hospitals and doctors like it was a back during the segregation days i don't think i don't know i don't think they would probably do that i don't think they'll put themselves you know out there uh pretty much but you remember okay v says you remember the movie in that movie v if y'all old enough i'm 52 or let me for your scholars i'm 25 times two plus two and v is a whole series right and they came the the, the extraterrestrials came but they look like humans and they mixed in with society they act like they came in peace and and but ultimately they ended up uh trying to breed with humans and they were reptilian okay and they at the end of the one of the final series they had a baby and the baby looked just like humans and and all of a sudden a, a reptilian tongue came out the baby oh man it was like i was young that thing just blew me away i didn't see the reboot i didn't know they had one I just did, like I said, I got this original, and I just keep it right here. It's like six, five, six DVDs. Uh, I didn't know that they made a new one. I will definitely look for it to check it out. Is it the same name that they made the, the reboot? Because if they did, that will be pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah. So, but, yeah, it was so, it was, and you think about it. Like I said, they, they, they was beautiful. They, you know, but they was wearing human skin, and one of the guys saw it or he scratched one and then that's when he saw they it was a reptilian okay and so this is back then so they're talking about this is years and years ago when they make this thing and then like i said but at the end remember one of the guys and a girl actually had a baby uh with one of them and that was their way of trying to say that they was just as much as humans as us and the baby came out it was a beautiful human baby and everybody was standing around and when that joker opened his mouth, that reptilian tongue came out. It was like, uh, yeah, yep, yep, that was reptilian. Yeah, it's called 
Um, v, this is the movie up there uh, behind here. Uh, let me see if I can move this microphone. All righty. Got it for you. But uh, it's called V. That was the movie. Um, one of the, this lady, I don't have that DVD in there, but this lady was the, the king of them all and, or the queen. Uh, but they had a lot, it was a lot of series, but the guy that played Beastmaster, Mark, whatever his name and but one of the, it had 15 different uh, series, but the uh, Menace thing was very, very good. Yeah, back in. All right. Appreciate it, Nick. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. Every little penny, big penny in that, even though that's a big nickel, that's a big one. It's huge. I love it. Uh, I appreciate it. But, yes, uh, yeah, so, yes, it was in 84 and 2009. So they came back in 2009, Nunez? I didn't know. So uh, the TV series, uh, yeah, I'm going to check it out. You got to check it out. It is, it's, it's real cool. It's about 18 episodes, I think, 15, 16, and it's way back then. But they came to Earth, and they looked like us. Um, one of the DVDs is still in here. Uh, yeah, that guy, you know, he was the star of it, um, if you've seen him. And uh, now it's a little different from the movie Species. Not even close. Uh, yeah, it's not even close. Species was just kind of a that one out. You know, the the girl. You know, Paris Whitaker. This is a whole series of community. How they uh, introduced them to the Earth and how they try to integrate with our society and how they had this ultimate plan that we didn't know. And one guy got behind the scenes and. It was just like an evolution of, you know, people thought they came in peace. They did stuff to fool the community, and people welcomed them all over the world, and they was friendly, and but they was bringing in all these other spacecrafts and stuff. But, again, they was reptilians, and they was trying to breed with the humans. And, like I said, this is a whole movie series. So this thing is really good. Uh, definitely find it. It's a classic. You will definitely love that. All right. Appreciate it, Nicole. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, we don't start at something now. Y'all going to get me to, you know, jam in a house for y'all or something. I don't know. But definitely, you know, I had my little music the other night uh, that I was uh, doing. Okay, let's see. Just found it online. We'll start it this weekend. Where you find it at? Was it like on uh, streaming somewhere? They got the whole series? Uh, tell us where you found it. Because definitely, I'm sure some other people will like to check this out. Sounds like the movie they live. No, it's it's whole totally different. They live. I remember you're gonna this whole series, and it's kind of funny how they was making these movies back then. Okay, so, uh, but yeah, let us know, El Sol, where did where did you find it? So we can pretty much, uh, you know, I'll pin it up, or we you know we'll show people uh, from there. So I think that would be pretty cool uh, to kind of go through that. I would definitely want to know that. Yeah. So, see, not the only one. Recess, please. So, again, I'm going to put it up. Also, you you the moment now. Where did you find it? Everybody wants to know. Inquiring minds want to know where you find this at and uh, how much I like to get a hard copy. You know, I'm going to Google while we're sitting here, too, just in case uh, Elso doesn't find, uh, popped out or something. But, uh TV series uh, V. That's going to be the name of it. Uh, and V was was uh, still for victory because we had to get a victory as humans, okay? So that's why they called it uh, victory. So I'm looking at Tubi saying you can watch it for free. Amazon Prime has it. Let me see if it's the whole series. You can buy – how many seasons was this thing? Hang on. Amazon Prime has the whole season, the complete series, it says, for uh, $29.99, or you can buy episode 18, it says, for, um, you can buy each episode for $2 if you want, but it has the 
whole, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's 19 episodes, okay? So it's on Amazon right now, Prime. Uh, so if you got an Amazon, you can order it. It would be worth it. You will trip out. Did this used to be a lot of sci-fi creature feature movies? Uh, there used to be, uh, yeah. Um, the original V series was all about World War II and aliens were supposed to be like Nazis. Uh, okay, so there was one before this one then. Okay, it's what you're saying. Uh, yeah, man. Okay, well, that's cool. I didn't know that. This is all social commentary about it. politics. Hmm. Wow. And, that, you know, it's kind of weird because all that stuff ties into I saw it on regular TV. It was very good. Yeah, but, yeah, I didn't know they had it on Amazon. It's worth, like I said, you know, uh, it's something I may just buy it because if you buy it, it will never go anywhere. It'll stay in your account, and you can watch it all the time, but you can't clip it. Amazon, be, be shoot, they got stuff in their stuff. They know. They do not uh, – let you clip that laugh loud. Laugh, they are taxing. Yeah, so I think it's it's pretty much uh, from there. But uh, again, I, I like to thank each and every one of you who who uh, show some support tonight. I mean, man, I really appreciate those super stickers and chats and and everything else because it really um, helps out. You know, here especially just doing this on a full time basis, and, and hopefully next year, year after next year or something, when all these movies kick in. And then at this point, oh, Nick, Nick, definitely uh, I'm going to be ending the live stream in a minute, in a little bit. Uh, if you up for a few minutes, it's something I want to run by you. You and I talked about it in the past, but I got it ready now. Uh, and then for anyone else, if you are, if you like writing blogs and articles or something, uh, definitely get with me. Uh, I have something I'm working on that all of you are going to love. And uh, but definitely, if you are uh, just um, go to whythebigsecret.com, you know, you can send me an email to contact at whythebigsecret.com, or you can go there and leave a voicemail, whatever, on the main website. Uh, but definitely reach out to me uh, or Instagram, you know, which you see right there, you know, uh, real Roderick Martin, or you know, send me an Instagram message. Looking for some writers uh, within this parameters of what we're doing and stuff from there, too. So, but Nick, anyway, if you are going to be up, you know, or I can hit you tomorrow or something, too, but definitely need about five minutes and run something by you as well uh, from there. But yep, V is it, stands for victory. Uh, and it'd be kind of weird. I forgot how we defeated them, though. I think it was some kind of method that we ended up defeating them. So I'm not really showing. Sure. Uh, from there, but uh, uh, communicate with the entities via mediums based on aliens in the South Pole. Yeah, I told that story. On uh, anybody seen that documentary called the uh, the Two Face Gray? Have y'all seen that one yet? Um, and that documentary has some great timelines and goes through some great stuff uh, when it comes down to this thing. And you definitely want to check that out. Uh, but he goes through that timeline in Antarctica, you know, the Russians, then Germany, then American, you know, all the way to Project uh, High Jump and all what happened there in Antarctica. So I thought that was pretty damn interesting. So definitely you want to check that out uh, from there and, and just kind of see. But in the meantime, I think that was pretty much from there. So, um, so you're interested? All right, all right, okay. So definitely, Nicole. I think, I, if I think we, you have my cell phone number anyway. I think we talked in, in the past. If we haven't, I'll just hit me on uh, through Clubhouse or whatever. I'll give you the cell phone number if you're interested, and we'll talk there too, uh, or just whenever you let me know. I'm more of a night owl, uh, as y'all can see here uh, from there. So, uh, uh, Nunez, all right, you're smiling. Okay, yeah, but yeah, if you. Uh, yeah, definitely, you know, check out a few of those things. But what I was getting ready to say, there's a lot of stuff. Actually, I just lost my train of thought. I was just saying, asking y'all about something, wasn't I? What I was looking for, what I'm doing here. But anyway, um, yeah, so uh, get ready for a lot of things that's coming down the pipeline and what we're doing uh, and pretty much. And as I, uh, you know, I don't have too much 
of the, of the final thoughts that I'll give you guys today and just say that I really appreciate each and every one of you uh, for supporting what we do. I promise you, I promise you that I got a lot of stuff working on in the background with a lot of people, a lot of things to give our community, our group, something very special when it comes down to this UFO community. You have no idea of the time and the resources that are going behind the scenes to to really line these things up because I was trying to put things in perspective before some of these TV shows come out to so people start looking me up and saying, hey, you're doing this, this, and that, and uh, definitely going to be doing that. Um, interviews, uh, you know, where we can, you know, I have, I have Nick Pope, uh, which him and I have the same agent, Richard Dolan. I have all of these people uh, lined up to talk with us. Uh, and I mean, a whole bunch of them. I just hadn't had the opportunity to put the schedule and things down uh, as well. So <clears throat> still dealing with the cold is why I didn't do the TV show last week, uh, the eight episodes. So hopefully we'll be doing that next week because it's on this down end uh, from there. But again, I just like to say I want to thank each and every one of you for supporting. You haven't seen none yet. I got my hats, Why the Big Secret hats, the logo, shirts. Uh, if you go to the YouTube channel, there is a place there. I think you can order. Now, if you go to whythebigsecret.com, there's a place you can order mugs, hats, and all that stuff. So uh, the brand itself uh, is trademarked, so we'll be doing that. I have, and we might delve into a lot of other stuff, a little off the rail, a little bit of, of ufology when it comes down to some of these big secrets, because there's going to be a lot of stuff we're going to be doing. So, um, yeah, I just want to thank you guys from there. Look at that. All right. Caught you on Spotify, Anjali. Yep, yep, yep. That one stuck. That was, Anjali was a, and in fact, me and her text not long ago uh, was a, a really great story. Uh, and uh, it still moves on, okay, uh, pretty much from there. So, again, Stacy, thank you for the support as well. Uh, and I just can't tell y'all from the bottom of my heart for real. Uh, and Nick, a lot of us say no. We and Nick support me on the uh, in the cold on the uh, buy a cup of coffee. You know, we have a monthly uh, five dollar subscription for the uh, troop secrets that we're putting together a private section there too. So uh, I just really appreciate it. So I just want to thank y'all uh, for everything uh, that y'all do, and we'll just kind of go from there. So if anybody got any other questions or anything, I'm, I'm gonna get ready to close this out. Um, I will <coughs> probably do Tuesday. And then we'll do Clubhouse on Wednesday. And then we'll, we're, every Thursday, I think starting next week, will be an interview. Uh, so definitely, you know, I got that new phone system. So if you want to uh, definitely, uh, you know, call in. So if you want to speak to Nick Pope or, you know, any of the guests, you'll be able to call in on this show uh, and ask them questions. So that system, I think we played with it last week. So it is in, 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 you know, ready for it to go. And so, uh, again, Dorian, thank you uh, from that. So it's been a plum, please, and pleasure as well as a privilege. I'm Roderick Martin. Uh, thank you for coming to the Wider Big Secret. Again, if you are a writer and, and stories in this, hit me ASAP, okay? Definitely hit me ASAP. And, Nick, uh, I'm going to text you in a few minutes, okay? And so uh, we'll definitely be doing that. So good night, y'all. Um, Tuesday night. We'll be back Tuesday night. And so we'll, we'll talk to y'all then. Okay. All right. Y'all have a blessing. Blessed one. Thank you.